I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you're having a good time with your technology today. We're going to be getting into some good things from the old website, drbill.cc, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C for computer curmudgeon. And oh, by the way, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. I'm so glad you joined us today. It's just, I'm, you know, here's the thing. Two weeks now, there's been kind of eh, tech news. And this week, there finally was some real cool tech news. So I'm kind of jazzed uh, about that. Let me go to the website, the aforementioned drbill.cc, and I will go to the scrolly part of the region of the screen and go to the first item. First item is... Actually, a cross post from the Handheld Hack blog, handheldhack.com, for all the news about the handheld device hackery. If that's a word. Anyway, uh, here it is. 7% of U.S. internet traffic is now from handheld devices. Think about that. 7%. Now, you might say, well, Dr. Bill, 7% is not that much. Well, not now. But that number is going to keep increasing and increasing and increasing because we just keep using those handheld devices. So I thought that was pretty cool. 7%. I mean, actually, if you think about it, that's, that's a lot for, you know, when you think of handhelds and internet traffic, not, you know, web browser on a PC. Okay. So anyway, next item. Dropbox plans to integrate with everything. They had a 250 million funding proposal that was accepted by some, you know, financial dude or whoever out there that basically gave them some money. You know what I'm talking about? They gave them some money so they could do stuff. We all like to do stuff. Somebody give me money, I would do some stuff. I can guarantee it. Anyway, but they have some stuff actually in mind. They're they're going to create more Dropbox-ish, you know, applications for all kinds of things. I mean, we've already got Dropbox on the Android phone, which I use, and Dropbox on your screen, uh, on your PC. So it's just cool. And speaking of, you know, people funding things and ideas that people are entrepreneurially Boy, I'm really coming up with some words <laughs> this week, but I usually do. Uh, entrepreneurial endeavors. Uh, there's one that was at Web 2.0. There's a conference called Web 2.0. And MC Hammer. Do you remember MC Hammer? You can't touch this. Doom, do, do, do. That guy. Anyway, that was my MC Hammer impersonation. Doesn't work. <laughs> Anyway, he's promoting a new search engine. What? He's coming up with a search engine called Wiredo. I don't know about that name, Wiredo. Anyway, it's in beta right now, so I don't think it actually does anything yet. But the whole idea is is that MC Hammer is a closet techie, and he has a team of people that are working on this website that will do relationship information on your web searches yes I don't know I just thought it was weird that MC Hammer was doing a techie endeavor just odd but anyway but you can't touch this I just I don't know it's stuck in my head now particularly since I put the image on the on the blog there of him doing the dance that goes with the baggy pants and you can't touch this song <sighs> now a word anyway. from our sponsor <laughs> Always wanted to say that. Anyway, our sponsor, of course, is Citrix Systems. Citrix has an awesome product called GoToMeeting. 
Now, GoToMeeting now has HD faces. You can see HD. That's the whole 16 by 9 aspect ratio, just like on this show right here. And you can see it using your webcam and using the new GoToMeeting with HD faces. So check out this special URL right here, gotomeeting.com. Enter the podcast code podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, as it says right here, and you will get a free 30-day trial of GoToMeeting. So check that out because it's good. It's awesome. And if you do that and you enter the code podcast, it will help the doctor. So that's awesome. Excellent. There you go. Item for sure. A camera. Now, this is weird. A camera that allows you to snap now and focus later. Huh? How does that work? Basically, if you notice, there's a picture of it on the blog there. It's a camera that's basically just a tube. And you snap things with it. And you don't even have to care about focusing or doing anything. You just snap, 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 snap. Then you take it and put it on your, your computer, and you can rack the focus in and out on the computer because it's captured all the light. I don't know how it does that, but it captures it in such a way that you can actually focus after the fact. So you could like focus on something in the foreground, focus on something in the background. I, that's That just seems like magic to me. You know, I mean, I was a photographer in the early days back when back when men were men and you really had to use a camera and go in the dark room and develop the film yourself <laughs> that was my kind of photography okay nobody does that anymore it's all electronic oh well but it's pretty cool stuff don't even have to focus I mean, what's the world coming to anyway I just the more I think about that the more weirder it gets but that's the nature of things, I suppose. Anyway, next item, Puppy Linux. Let me talk a little bit about Puppy Linux. Puppy Linux, I first heard about through, I think it was Patrick Norton on TechZilla, talking about how Puppy Linux was one of his favorite distros of Linux. And I downloaded it and played with it. I got to admit, pretty cool. It looks a little, a little retro somehow. You know, like an older version of Windows, kind of. But it's it's really pretty cool. And the coolest thing about it is it is a very small distro, meaning it runs really, really well on older PCs. So if you've got an old PC and you can't think of anything to do with it because it just won't handle, you know, modern Windows, then you can put Puppy Linux on it and it will fly. I mean, it will just be speedy. Okay, so check it out, and they're, they're, they have a new version out, version 5.2 called Wary. You know how they like to name Linux distros funny names. Uh, the latest Ubuntu is the Oneric Ocelot. What? Anyway, so it's like the Lucid, what was it, Lucid Lynx was one of the earlier ones before this latest one anyway so this is wary so the puppy is wary not too sure I don't know why they call it that anyway the legacy PC friendly wary version of its small footprint Linux distribution hard to say puppy Linux 5.2 wary features an SMP optimized version of the Linux 2.6.32.45 kernel an upgrade path to Zorg, that's Xorg, I like to say Zorg, <laughs> 7.6, just because it's fun. An updated Puppy Phone 1.1 VoIP app, a new Pup Camera app for automatically detecting digital cameras, says the project. Pretty cool. Anyway, I just thought it was cool. They also have things like uh, Puppy... <laughs> <laughs> this is this just gets weirder and weirder here. Puppy Linux 5.2 is one of the many puppy variants built on the project's Woof build system. Their system for building distros is called Woof, including Lucid, Racy, Fat Dog, and Slacko. 
<laughs> introduced in November 2008 and joined in 2009 with the related Puppy Package Manager, PPM. Wolf can build a puppy variant from the packages of any Linux distro, including Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, Slackware, thus the names, and T2, the foundation used by this latest weary release. Yes. In addition to weary, the other major variant is called Lucid Puppy, Lupu, <laughs> which was released in its 5.2.8 version in August. Based on Ubuntu 10.04 LTS, Lucid Puppy offers Ubuntu compatibility and more cutting edge features. For example, the latest release added C and FM PEG libraries optimized for the i686 computers rather than the older i386 computers, thereby improving performance. Yes. So, and it's got a cute little mascot kind of logo thing. Anyway, this is a real kind of a Linuxy distro edition here. Because the next item is talking about what makes the new Ubuntu 11.10 so great. By the way, my laptop has Ubuntu and Windows dual booting, and I booted into Ubuntu, and I went in there, and it automatically came up and said, well, not automatically, I had to go to the upgrade manager, but it came up and said, would you like to go ahead and upgrade to 11.10? And I said, sure. <laughs> it went ahead and did it. And it was slick. It worked really well. So I thought, you know, man, it's not like the old days on Linux when you had to be a super geek. It's actually quite cool and easy. So anyway, this is a video off YouTube that I posted on the blog that shows all the various features of Ubuntu 11.10. And I thought it was a pretty neat video. So I'm going to show it to you right now. cool that neat all the features well not all the features but a lot of the features of 11.10 right there in the video for you to see with interesting music as well yes so next item Google is to refresh the Gmail interface now we know and love Gmail it's been around forever and it's just kind of there you know I mean it's web-based mail so they decided to spiff up the interface, but at the same time to simplify it, which I like that idea. It gets cluttered otherwise. You know, too many interfaces these days get cluttery, too much stuff going on. So I like the fact that they're simplifying it. So it's an upcoming refresh. It's not out yet. Not available yet, but it's coming. And it uh, they leaked to YouTube a video that showed what some of the features were and the guy kind of went oops didn't mean to do that well of course he did mean to do that or he wouldn't have done it but anyway they said ah oh, go ahead show it to everybody so it's cool worked out so anyway there you go whoa 
that drum roll is reminding us of the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is Weebia. Why do they come up with weird names for software? Weebia. Cool. Anyway, Weebia is a toolbar kind of thingy for your websites. Now, if you are a webmaster like moi, like I am, then you appreciate the little add-on doohickeys you can do to websites. Now, some of them are tacky. Some of them are not very useful. But this one, actually, I, I like. I like this. And if you go to the website, the aforementioned blog, drbill.cc, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C -L -L for computer curmudgeon, and you look at the website and you go to the bottom of the screen and look, you'll see there's a toolbar there that kind of floats. You can scroll up and down the screen. It still stays right there at the bottom. That is indeed the toolbar we're talking about for the Geek Software of the Week. And if you notice, it's got all kinds of features down there. You can click on my YouTube videos. You can click on the feed, the RSS feed. You can click on Facebook and Twitter. You can join a chat room right there on the Dr. Bill website. You can look at recent posts. You can tweet, you can plus one me, which by the way, please do that. Plus one me. That would be so nice. Anyway, there you go. Isn't that cool? So it's a thing you can add in. Now, let me tell you a little bit about it. Okay. By the way, let me digress just a moment here. One of our earlier Geek Software of the Weeks was called Dragon Disc. And I had an email from the author of Dragon Disc. And he was saying, I'm sorry you didn't like my website or my software. And I was like, dude, I did. What was up with that? I made you a Geek Software of the Week. That's an honor. But he didn't speak English. So he had a very broken English, you know, email that he sent me uh, saying, sorry you didn't like it. Tell me what I can do to improve. And I'm like, I liked it. You know, I thought it was cool. So he misunderstood. So I used the Google Translate feature of Google to send him back an email in French that said I liked your website and your software that's why I made you a geek software of the week keep up the good work so hopefully he got that and understood it I appreciate that at any rate that's part of the translate feature on this Webia web bar thing is that you can translate the website into different languages pretty cool anyway I was going somewhere with that. Where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, the fact that this Geek Software of the Week, that I like it. I think it's cool. So to all you software folks out there that write software, if I make you a Geek Software of the Week, I like you. Yes. And I want you to like me. We all like to like each other. In the Facebook sense of liking and plussing and things. So do that. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, I don't know, it just kind of struck me weird. You know, guy, I kind of honor his software, and he sends me a letter saying, I'm sorry you didn't like me. So sometimes things are lost in translation, I guess is my point. And I understand that, but I find it disconcerting. Because, I, you know, I don't dislike anyone. I'm not one of those people that hold grudges or, I don't know, things of that nature. Just a kind of a nice guy. Yes. So, a warm, lovable fuzzball of a guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the show this week. A little bit on the short side. Not too bad. Yeah, you know. But we'll be back. Yes. And until then, remember that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.